When we have a look at the Intel Core i9-10900K product specifications, we can find three Turbo Boost technologies listed. Intel Thermal Velocity Boost, Intel Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0, and Intel Turbo Boost Technology 2.0. Let's have a closer look at those last two. Intel has a long history of trying to give customers additional out-of-the-box performance. In fact, the history of Turbo Boost goes way, way back to February 1999. During the Spring 99 Intel Developer Forum, Intel announced the Gazerville technology. Gazerville would switch the operating frequency and voltage of a notebook processor depending on whether it's connected to AC power or battery powered. When using AC power, the frequency of the mobile Pentium 3 400 processor would increase to 500 MHz. Later that same year, during the Computex trade show, Intel demoed two notebook prototypes with this technology enabled. Gazerville would eventually make it to the market rebranded as Speedstep. About a decade and many iterations of dynamic frequency technologies later, including enhanced Speedstep and various forms of dynamic acceleration technology, in 2008, Intel introduced Turbo Boost 1.0 along with the Intel Core microarchitecture codenamed Nihalem. But the one cool thing I want to talk about today, you know, is how we convert this power headroom back into performance. That's what we're calling Turbo Mode. So the idea is if you have, let's say, four cores and you detect that only, say, one or two cores are actually active, we turn the power gates off, the power of those cores goes to zero, then the power control unit takes all of this power, gives it back into higher voltages, higher frequency, and we get a boost in performance as a result. So literally, we're able to turn the, dynamically that available power budget into more performance. Absolutely. Turbo mode, that's really yep. cool. Three years later, Intel introduced a second version of Turbo Boost called, well, Turbo Boost 2.0. While the general principles are the same, there are some key differences between Turbo Boost 1.0 and Turbo Boost 2.0. First, Turbo Boost 2.0 increased the amount of turbo bins over base frequency. Second, Turbo Boost 2.0 factors into account not only the CPU cores, but also the other parts of the CPU die. For example, the integrated graphics can boost to a higher frequency in gaming workloads where the GPU performance is more important than the CPU performance. But most importantly, Turbo Boost 2.0 expands the power budget to well above the TDP rating. This last point is crucial to understanding how Turbo Boost works. Take note, the processor can safely operate above TDP for short periods of time when there is sufficient headroom. The headroom expands when the processor has been at lower power for a while. The headroom is reduced when the system has been running at high power. The Turbo Boost algorithm works according a proprietary EWMA formula. This stands for exponentially weight moving average. The exact formula is not known, but we can do a simple test to demonstrate the behavior. Hey guys, it's Editing Peter here. I have a couple of charts in Excel that will help you understand how Turbo Boost 2.0 works in the real world. So let's have a look. To demonstrate how Turbo Boost 2.0 works, I set the BIOS to enforce all default Turbo Boost limits. Then I use Prime95 to track the CPU package power. When we run Prime95 with AVX, you can see that the Turbo is enabled for about 38 seconds. The power consumption reaches 235 watts and then drops sharply to 125 watts. If we run Prime95 without AVX, the Turbo is enabled for about 45 seconds. That's because the power consumption is only 210 watts. The power budget at the beginning of each test was the same. However, since our non-AVX workload is less demanding, the power budget is consumed at a rate that's much slower than our AVX workload. So we can turbo for longer. When we run an even less demanding workload with eight threads compared to the default 20 threads, we can see that the turbo boost duration is much longer. The turbo boost is maintained for well over one minute. That's because the power consumption here is only about 160 watts. If we add an additional voltage offset of 0.1 volt on top of our most demanding workload, Prime95 with AVX and all 20 threads enabled, we can see a big impact on the turbo boost. Instead of 38 seconds, we only get 29 seconds of turbo time. That's because more voltage means more power. In our case, the power increases to almost 250 watts. Lastly, just for comparison, here's what the chart looks like with unlocked power limits. The CPU package power reaches over 275 watt sustained. While this will deliver amazing performance, it will also need a very strong cooling solution. 
I also tracked a bunch of other metrics and put them in an easy to understand table for you. You can see that depending on your workload and the Turbo Boost configuration, you can see a wide range of frequencies, voltages, temperatures, and power consumption figures. In 2016, Intel introduced the Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0. While it carries the same Turbo Boost name, it's not really an iteration on Turbo Boost 2.0. Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0 aims to exploit the natural variance in CPU core quality observed in multi-core CPUs. As you may know, there is a certain variance in overclocking capabilities between CPUs. Well, there is also a certain variance in quality between the cores inside a CPU. With Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0, Intel has a way of identifying the best cores in your CPU, and we call those the favored cores. The favored cores are important for two reasons. First, Intel allows for additional overclocking of the favored cores. On the Comet Lake 10900K, two out of the 10 cores will boost to 5.3 GHz, while the others are limited to 5.1 GHz. Two, the operating system will automatically assign the most demanding workloads to these favored cores, ensuring a potential higher performance. On Broadwell E, Turbo Boost Max 3.0 was available for one core. On Skylake X, this feature expanded to two cores. The latest iteration of Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0 allows boosting of up to four cores on certain architectures. In some motherboard biases, you can find out which of your CPU's cores are the favored cores. 